All right, uh, good evening, everyone. I know we're almost at the end of the day. We made it. What a great event. So we're gonna make sure that our presentation is gonna be, uh, has a little flavor for the developers out there, the architects out there, and the designers. And to be selected and recognized over 100 teams that participated, great job for the rest of the teams, but also grateful to Diaconia's technical team. And I'm also grateful to my advisor, Avamshi from AWS, who collaborated with us to put this project together. So thank you, Pinecone team and the partners for giving us the opportunity to be here and to present. Since the dawn of time, every innovation and or invention have resulted because of some inspiration that happens due to something exciting, happy, or sometimes even sad and depressing. At Diaconia, we're no different. We actually take our inspiration as an organization to build impactful AI solutions that actually matter across the world. And from that perspective, we built our solution called Project Golden Hour. How many of you actually remember this part at gut-wrenching picture? It was taken at the recent earthquake that happened in Turkey. And this is the picture of a father who was holding the hands of his dead daughter. And this is something that we see across every natural disaster that happens every year. Over 60,000 lives are lost every single year due to natural disaster. And here's the amazing part about that. Those 60,000 deaths are not just from the actual impact of the natural disaster event. It's also the lives that are last and lost after the event happens. And this moment, the immediate hour after the natural disaster and the hours that follow after that are called the crucial moments of life, especially for the ones who actually have the lives dangling. That hour is called golden hour because it is a time that differentiates between their first responders being able to get there on time to save those lives or actually help mitigate further damage and even more to actually set up the foundation for future recovery efforts. So that is where Diaconia got the inspiration to build Project Golden Hour. Our philosophy was very simple. We wanted to look at every image data that is captured from satellites or drones, annotate those images, and infuse the AI algorithms to derive intelligent insights that can then be handed over to the first responders who can then get there on time. So to do so, we actually picked three simple objectives. Objective number one, we want to ensure that there was a real-time geospatial dashboards. And these dashboards are meant to provide real-time access to the sites that are damaged and are not damaged, and then infuse geospatial search and analytics that can help these responders search and identify where things happen and where the damages are. But that is not just enough we also have to be able to provide them a route guidance so they would be able to navigate exactly to the right place by avoiding places that are worse than normal. So these three simple objectives is what we focused our solution on. So to talk more about the building blocks from a technical standpoint, I'm gonna invite Vamshi to dive a little more deeper about the building blocks of the solution, and we also have a little recorded demo just to avoid the curse of live demos that will talk to you and show you how the solution works. Hey, thank you, Praveen, for the great intro of the, our application. So we know we wanted to build a real-time imagery uh, annotation system. So we work backward from it. So what do we need as a building blocks? The first one is image annotation. So we, we wanted to derive features, like what to what, what define a feature or like uh, images. Uh, what are the text features of it, the descriptions of it. So that's a key for it. Then after that, like we wanted to extract the metadata. So where does this image fall in, into a geospatial map? So what are the latitudes and longitudes and how can we map it? Next one is like once we derive the features and the metadata, we wanted to store them in a segregated fashion so that we can index and retrieve the, feed, retrieve the images when needed. And that too in a time sensitive manner. The next one is we wanted to store the embeddings and the features in a data store where we can retrieve them 
and that will be very key for in categorization and uh, cataloging the images. At the end, we are storing the all, but we have to retrieve them at the same speed. So we wanted to find the images which are relevant and show it to the user. Finally, natural language understanding. Now, natural language understanding is the new programming language where you power up the applications. And that's it, you talk to your images. So now let's see a quick demo of it. Thank you to the Pinecone team and its sponsors for this amazing hackathon opportunity. We are Team Golden Hour, and we have developed a real-time disaster image annotation system. It can identify and annotate damages occurring during a disaster by analyzing images in real time. The system then displays this information on a special map, which can be used by first responders to make educated decisions and potentially save lives. Let me show you a little demo of this application. The system accepts natural language queries as instructions and performs a semantic search on the back end using Pinecone for indexing and searching, OpenAI for language processing, and Hugging Face for a transformer model trained on OpenAI's CLIP architecture. We have also used Streamlit for the interactive user interface. To build this end-to-end -end solution, we have leveraged AWS. Now let's proceed with the queries. The application supports two main functionalities, geospatial search and a real-time dashboard. With geospatial search, we can query for disaster damages and retrieve relevant images shown on a geospatial map. The real-time dashboard displays disaster images as they are uploaded and annotated in real time. Let's start with the geospatial search. We can provide a search query with natural language, such as show me flooding damage images in North Carolina. Currently, the system is implemented at state level, but it can be expanded to county and zip code levels. The application generates an interactive map with the relevant images and their associated locations. Now let's explore the search results. Each image has a unique ID, or UID, and captures GPS coordinates and the state it belongs to. We also have a URL for each image, although integration to directly display the images is still in progress. From the images displayed, we can identify damages caused by flooding, fire, and other disasters. We can also zoom in and out on the maps to see where the damages are occurring. For example, we can see a landslide in Puerto Rico where vehicles are unable to pass through. The system provides valuable real-time information about the damages. Now let's move on to the real-time dashboard. In this demo, we are focusing on the state level. We start with an empty map showing no damages by resetting the index. Then we upload images to simulate real-time processing. For instance, we upload two images that show landslide damages. As the damages are uploaded, they go through the real-time pipeline and are annotated and displayed on the map. We can see the images we uploaded, their corresponding UID, the state, in this case we're talking about Puerto Rico, and the damage level, and here it's a landslide, and the AI system accurately annotates the images and the results are shown in real time on the map. We can upload more pictures and the system will process and display them accordingly. This real time process is crucial for providing up to date information to first responders. By capturing and analyzing the metadata and features of the images, which are stored in Pinecone, we can query the system and retrieve the latest damages. This information can aid first responders in making informed decisions about where the damages are located. In the future, we aim to extend the application to provide navigation assistance to first responders. For example, if a bridge is damaged and first responders need to travel from point A to point B, the system can identify alternative routes to avoid the damage. This functionality relies on real-time directions information from the Google API. This prototype demonstrates the potential of our application. It offers valuable real-time information about disaster damages, empowering first responders to make informed decisions and potentially save lives. Thank you. Oh, we have seen that. <laughs> Thank you. So now we have seen a demo of how it works. Now let's look at like how it's been built. Like what are the key services that's been used? So let's start with image annotation. So we used OpenAI clip architecture to train the multimodal net model, which is trained on the images and the text pairs. So we use transformer architecture to uh, train this model. 
and we used AWS service, different AWS services to build the end-to-end -end solution and mainly SageMaker to train the model and host the, host the inference endpoint. And we use Pinecone to store the embeddings and along with the metadata, which are the key in this search. So for prompt engineering, we use Langchain, which will orchestrate the entire conflow while from the query to the answer. And for the natural language understanding, like basically like what the user is asking for, what type of damage and in which place. So we use OpenAI to do that. Finally, we used uh, S3 buckets to store the segregated uh, pictures or images. So that way it will be key in the time of retrieval where we can get millisecond to a millisecond latency. So for the user interface, we use Streamlit to capture the user query and also show the images in the geospatial map. Our AI model. So let's talk a bit about AI model and how we developed that. So we used open AI clip architecture. So clip stands for contrast to language image pre-training. This is a multimodal, uh, multimodal model which is trained on images and text space together. So what it does is it generates the text embedding and also the image embeddings which will be used for its training. So it works on the contrastive philosophies, like how dissimilar are the items? So similar items are grouped together in a vector dense space and the dissimilar items are pushed far in that. For training this model, we used Hugging Face Transformer architecture to uh, build the specific model. So we can use out of the box, but what is the need for the training? So OpenAI Clip would, uh, is trained on 1.8 million images where it's been trained on the different images on a we see on daily basis, along with the text available from the internet. But this, the specific use case we are talking about is a domain specific. What is flooding? Flooding is not just water. So it has certain char characteristics. It's a house surrounded by water where there is no access. So there is a lot of semantic meaning behind that images. So we had to train the, this model with that specific disaster images. So we took a public data set, it's called LADI. So it is low altitude disaster imagery. This is an open data source which has been collected during the time of disasters and damages for the last five years. So we trained, we took 5,000 images of it for four different damage labels, fire, flooding, landslide, and rubble, and we trained the model. So to train this model, we use SageMaker, uh, instances, those are like P3 family, we use two instances with 16 GPUs with uh, 5,000 of these images. Then once the model has been trained, we deploy this on a SageMaker inference endpoint. Okay, now let's look at the solution architecture. So first it starts with image data processing uh, pipeline. So we have huge corpus of images which are coming in. So Given this nature, we designed a horizontal, horizontally scalable architecture with different AWS services. Now, we expect this, this is a burst workload. So whenever a disaster happens, these images come in real time. So these are coming from the aerial devices. So we wanted to have a serverless architecture where it could scale based upon the load that we are receiving. So for each image, uh, a Lambda process is run. So these images are processed in concurrently. So the first, what it does is it goes and gets the GIS coordinates, like what is my latitude? What is my longitude? And what are the, I mean, uh, FIPS, it's called as FIPS. It's Federal Information Processing Standards, which defines which county or which state they belong to. So once we get that information, we take this image, generate embeddings. So that would be the text, labels along with the images. So we generate the, uh, I mean, uh, embeddings, and that embeddings are stored in Pinecone. Finally, what we do is we move the images in a segregated folders. So now we know which county they belong to or which state they belong to. So we try to index them and segregate them. So this is the image data processing pipeline. Now, how can we make it usable to the user? So the user interface. So that's been developed by Streamlit. So we have decoupled the front end with the back end. And as the user is asking the queries in natural language, so we used Langchain as a prompt engineering, which is deployed on Amazon Lambda, which would first identify what is the intent? What is the user asking for? Is user asking for a fire damages? Which state or which location? 
then what it does is it will convert that query into an embedding. So once that embedding, so we will try to find what are the similar images in the Pinecone index. And we get a list of images. So we filter that for the location that has been requested for. Then we send it back to the user. And we wanted to take this forward to provide a real-time navigation system where we can avoid, in real time, we can avoid, like say, if they wanted from, to go to, from point A to point B and there is a damage, or I would say in a disaster in that route, we wanted to provide them with alternate routes where we wanted to get the direction information from Google Directions API. So I'll stop here. I'll pass it to my friend. Thank you, Vamshi. So our goal really is to expand the solution into different areas. Obviously, the golden hour moment is so critical because it really takes a lot of people's lives. So our goal and hope is that this solution in the hands of the first responders would be able to save many, many more lives across the board so we don't have to lose any more lives. And we would like to expand the solution into wildfire detection and even threat detection monitoring for defense applications. And we're super excited to continue on this journey. And we obviously welcome anybody who wants to partner with us to embark on this journey. I want to close with one little saying by Helen Keller. She said that alone you can do little, but together you can do a lot more. So I hope that we all can rally together in building really cool, impactful solutions that matters. Thank you so much.